Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions, and in today's video, we're taking a look at multi-leaders in AutoCAD, how to create them, how to use them, set up your styles, as well as a few tips to better organize and make them look good in your drawings. Let's jump right into today's video and get going. Cheers. <laughs> First up, I haven't done a video in a little bit because I've been sick along with my kids. Uh, hopefully my voice is back enough that I can do this one today and it doesn't sound too odd. Um, to start, we're going to be taking a look at creating multi-leaders in AutoCAD and you can get to that uh, menu bar here by clicking on annotate in your ribbon tab and over here under leaders. Now leaders are pieces of text with a line and arrow or a line and a symbol pointing to an object or uh, a point in your drawing that you want to highlight and call out. So to create a multi-leader, it's as simple as clicking the multi-leader button up here or typing in the M leader command. It's going to ask you to choose an arrowhead location or start point for your line. By default, you can also choose to change that to leader landing first, which is going to place your text location first, and then you can draw the arrow to where you really get to go. Now I'm going to keep it at the default with arrow first, since I like to do that. And let's say we're going to call out this uh, window here, and we're just going to click and place our arrow, and then you can place your text location somewhere. And now you can type in your text, and we're just going to call this window. Now clicking outside of this box is going to end that command, and now you can create another leader. So let's say we want to put a few in our drawing, so we're going to call this one light. Now you're probably going to have a better description for each of these than I am, I'm just doing this quick to show you how these work. Now this one say is a wall plug. Now there's a few options and that's what we're going to get into today. In you can add multiple arrows or leaders to each piece of text by adding a leader using this button here. Simply select a multi-leader that currently exists and then click to add a second arrow. Now you can do this like say going to a second light or a third light. When you're done clicking and adding new ones, simply hitting enter will end that command. Now if you've created too many, you can simply click the remove leader select the leader that you'd like to remove something from, and then you click again to specify which one you'd like to remove. Hitting enter removes that leader. Now, another cool option that you have up here is the ability to align your leaders to a specific point. Now you can see in the example here, it's gonna allow you to neatly organize all of your leaders. So as you add more and more of these, you're gonna get a little bit of uh, a mess going on here and aligning them is going to make your drawing look much more professional and clean in the end result. So we're gonna click this align button up here. You can also type in M leader align to activate this command. And it simply asks you to select your multi-leaders. Now using a window, you can select them all and I can hit enter. Now I've got them all selected and it's gonna ask me which one would I like to align all of these in a line with. So I say I like the location of this plug leader. So you can see here, they're all aligning based on this. Now the trick here is if you hit F8 to turn on your ortho, which snaps to a straight vertical or horizontal line, and you simply go upwards to snap to a vertical line, it's going to place all of your leaders now in the same vertical line. Now, if these are all tightly mixed together, this is gonna make a really nice line down the side of your drawing where all of your text is matching. Now, that's a quick and easy way to instantly make your drawing look a little bit more professional rather than having leaders zigzagging down the side of your drawing. Now, what if you'd like to change up some of these settings within your leaders? Now there's a few spots you can do that. You can click this little arrow here to fly out or pop out the multi-leader style manager. You also have the option of hitting the drop down here and managing your multi-leader styles. It's the same dialog box. doesn't matter which way you go about getting to it. This is gonna display the type of styles you have. So right now we've only got two in this basic drawing. One thing I always recommend is setting up all these styles for your dimensions, your typical text, like multi-leader text, and your multi-leaders. Um, 
these are going to be worth setting up and spending time to dial in all of these sizes and dimensions and landing widths and all of that all of these little lines and sizes can be modified once you've got them set up the way you like add these styles to your template or do these in your template then save your template and every new drawing that you create is going to have these already in it it's going to save you a ton of time you'll only need to do this once in the life of your drafting career or project at the very least if you use different styles for different projects um, again now that we've got this manager open select the style you'd like to modify or create a new one and you're going to get this window here with all of your style settings so starting from the left you can change up the format of your leader so you've got different options like straight or spline and you can see what that does it gives it more of like an artsy maybe architectural uh, look to it if you use the spline you've also got the ability to change how the color is dictated whether it's by block by layer or give it in a specific color same goes for line type and line weight down here you have the ability to change up the symbol at the end of your leader I typically use a closed filled arrow but depending on the situation and what you're pointing to you may want something like the integral which is the uh, squiggly line I'll use that for hatched in or filled in areas say like a concrete sidewalk I may just put that in the middle of it so that it kind of gives you the impression that it's the entire area rather than something you're specifically pointing at and then below that is the size. So you can scale that up and down depending on the drawing size and scale you're using and what works for what kind of projects you typically do. Uh, same for the leader break size, as well as the leader structure tab over here. You're going to get a few other options. You can add constraints like maximum leader points, and that's going to allow you to maybe select a couple points when you're creating the leader if you want to get a little bit creative or if you need to be exact like getting uh, over here say if you wanted to make a leader to this uh, switch you could have the leader come up and then over and then up and over again if you added multiple points you can change the constraints here and what that's going to allow you to do landing settings are similar that's this little landing here you can set the distance or width of that by changing this value here and you can choose whether or not to even include it automatically when you're creating these scaling if you're using annotative text which I highly recommend and I've got videos on that and that kind of brings me to my next point here if you enjoy this video and the tips that I do on the channel make sure you check out my AutoCAD fundamentals and workflows course which is available now for instant download I'll put the link up above and down below it's packed full of over 10 years of my experience my best tips tricks and workflows to get you started in AutoCAD and boost you to be uh, more of a professional and faster designer in AutoCAD that's available now and I go into annotative text as one of the parts along with XREF's template setup and creation title blocks um, exporting and importing uh, and setting up entire drawings again if you'd like to make your leader annotative all you need to do is check this box on you can set your scale settings and then you're good to go these are going to scale up and down and using the annotative scales depending on what you've got your layout and viewport set to next is the content tab and this is basically where you're going to be able to adjust the text within your uh, leader or the content of the leader what it's displaying so here you can choose the type of multi-leader in M text or a block and after this I'll show you what the block ones look like quickly along with a tip on how to cool how a cool way to organize those you can set a default piece of text if you wanted to always say something uh, you can choose which text style depending on which ones are in your drawing again once you've set these things up you don't have to do them again so once you've created all of your text styles then you can simply reuse those styles in your dimensions and your leaders to keep everything looking consistent and the same size and style text angle you can angle your text um, 
I always keep it horizontal for the most part, um, but depending on how you're displaying your drawings, you may want to change that up. Again, you can change up your color and how that's decided, your text height, which is going to vary depending on your drawing and settings, as well as if you're always justifying or if you'd like to add a frame to your text, which is nice to have sometimes, but you can also add that through the properties, simply selecting your multi-leader and adding a text frame. I'll show you how to do that at the end as well. Leader connection, you can change how it's connecting, whether it's horizontally along the like horizontal plane or along a vertical plane, and then you can choose how it's attaching to that plane, as well as the gap, which is this distance here between the end of your landing and the start of your text. And then you can also decide whether you want to extend your leader right up to your text. All right, so that's it for settings. So you're gonna be able to tweak these as you see fit. And like I showed before, you can simply create new ones. So creating a new one is going to start with a copy of one of the other ones. And you can, so once you set up one, you can then simply create multiples with different settings, like make one with text frame, one without text frame, one that's annotative, one that's not annotative, all based on the first one you create and set up initially. Now for callout, you can see I've got one. It's going to be kind of like these tags here, but with a leader. This can come in handy, say, if you're dimensioning like an assembly or bolts and nuts and washers. You can put one of these and then have a call out, like say A, and then you can have a text description somewhere off on your page describing what's included in assembly A or part A, etc. All right, so lastly here, we're going to try out that call out version just so I can show you how that works. I'm going to click multi-leader and I've changed my style to call out by using this drop down. Again, we're going to choose our location. So maybe there are a bunch of parts on this sink here. Like you've got the actual sink, you've got the counter, you've got the uh, taps and faucets, drain, all those kind of things may each get a different tag number. So I'll call the first piece A and then maybe we put another one here to the faucet and taps and that's B. And then maybe another one say to the counter over here. C. So this allows you to call things out quickly and easily and it gives you a unique style that's going to stand out. Again, you can change all the settings of your style, like you can see the text is a little bit different on this one. You can go in and change that in those settings. Now this feature up here will collect all of these into a single leader. Now this can be helpful to um, clean up your drawing. Like you can see, I've added quite a few lines and a bit of a mess just to call out a single sink and uh, faucet assembly here. By using this button, I'm able to select the multi-leaders I would like to collate or collect, and then hitting enter is going to combine them all. Now you can see it's done it in the order of how I've selected. So you can see here, CAB is how I click them. You can hit undo and do this again and I'm going to choose it A, B, C and hit enter. And you can see now it's collated them all in order. So this is a great way to set up your leaders if you're using these columns. It's going to keep everything a little bit more organized and it still shows that there's three separate items in this assembly. Now on the side of your drawing, say on your uh, layout, you may have a note or a description or a table showing what each of these is along with say dimensions and specs and a price or a call out or something to that extent. But that's how multi-leaders work within AutoCAD. That's how to easily add and remove additional leaders as well as change up your styles. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. And if there's something you'd like to see in a new video, let me know that as well. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. And cheers. See you in the next one.